not sure on who will be representing the delegation from oh. agriculture. Well, yes, it's actually our colleague Bongiswa. So Bongiswa, welcome and bon please Giswa. introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> good morning uh, to the chairperson and good morning uh, to, to the members and the rest actually of the colleagues. My name is Bongiswa Matoti. I am the head of the Agricultural Economic Services within the Western Cape Department of Agriculture. But on the line, I'm together with one of my colleagues, uh, Tsepo Morokong, and I think Tsepo can introduce himself as well. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Yeah, as Ms. Matoiti indicated, I'm Sepo Morocco. I'll be joining in. I'm with the department under the program Agricultural Economic Services. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. So I'll now move to apologies. I have noted apologies from Minister Wenger, who is traveling at the moment um, on this very important issue. And I've also noted an apology from one of our members, Nomi Nkwontlo. On to the next matter. With that, I just want to quickly run through house rules. We all know the house rules, but I'll just state them for the record. So um, I just ask of members online, if you, you could please keep yourselves muted and your video off throughout the duration of the call. But when you're called on to speak, please can you use the raise hand function. Um, sorry, please can you unmute yourself and can you also turn on your video? If you have any questions, then you can use the raise hand function as well, um, preferably not the chat box, just because it helps us to manage the call a little bit better. And if you can keep the devices around you on mute as well so that it doesn't interrupt um, the call or your flow when you're speaking. All right. So with that, we'll now move on to the next part of the agenda, and that will be the briefing from the Department of Economic Development and Tourism. That'll be followed by a briefing of Wesker, and then we'll go into an opportunity for questions um, from the members, and then we'll move on to agriculture and repeat. All right, over to Didat and Wesker. So good morning, um, Chairperson, once again. Moweni, um, Wamkelekile, lovely to be here. And Chairperson, thank you for, um, we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time with you in the chamber. I love the chamber, but it, it is nice on a cold day to have a remote meeting and all be cozy wherever we are. So um, Ilsa will be flighting the slide decks for, for both Westgro and, and our team. And I just want to very briefly set the scene. When we look at this very important trade agreement of AGOA, what it means for the Western Cape is it is it's just so crucial. And I think what we want to, the overarching message is, We've just completed a process of writing a new, very exciting growth for jobs strategy, which takes us to 20, well, which sets a target for the next 12 years. And a big part of that, in fact, one of what's called the provincial strategic goals or focus areas is exports. So exports is a what we call a PFA of the of the next um, growth strategy and a key part of that export are opening trade routes within Africa and the rest of the rest of the world. And um, today we're going to be outlining to you the critical importance of this particular relationship with the USA. It's something that I mean, Ilsa and I have both personally been to trade fairs in the US on two consecutive years, and it's a burgeoning market both for travel, I mean, we've just spent um, years working up towards international direct flights, which, as you know, includes the bottom of the belly. You know, the the the, the export. When I left, it was me. It was Now I want to come back. Apologies, if we can just wait a minute. Um, I'd like to see if. All right, please continue. Yes, so so we've just we've gone had such a success story on opening routes, flight routes, both for commercial flights, for trade, and and here we are poised to to grow our position as an as both an importer and an exporter from the U.S. market. So um, this this is a crucial agreement, and I hope today we will land to you as members the the importance of this and what we are doing to to continue to focus on this key market. So. Ilse, uh, you are welcome. And um, yeah, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, so today I'm just going to be taking you through into just the, this is just the introduction. Wesco is going to do a lot more of the, the statistics behind it. So in terms of exports with regards to why is it a priority market? So 
as Rashid mentioned, it's a it's a PFA in G4J. Uh, we've been working on it for a number of years in terms of looking at different opportunities. Historically, the Western Cape has adopted an export orientated approach. This was in our current five year. So even before G4J and COVID, we identified that this was a priority area. And this, of course, was long standing efforts and investment that we've done in the export space with regards to export promotion from West Coast perspective. However, exporters in the Western Cape are confronted by multiple constraints, especially with regards to um, extended existing exports into new markets and to expand the province's export base. We've historically been growing uh, quite rapidly, but very much in terms of the primary agriculture and Bongiswa's presentation will touch on that. But with regards to our big target of tripling exports, we have to think broader than that. Um, within this PFA, specifically in terms of how do we add value to our export base and how do we grow in terms of the different commodities. And that's a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last two years. So definitely this speaks to G4J, as Rashid mentioned, and um, especially it raises the issue of how do we contribute more from the Western Cape in terms of the national trade policy agenda and objectives. Then in terms of the performance, so just to, to touch lightly on terms of this. So, Elsa, yes, quick, I'm, I'm not seeing your slides moving. I'm seeing you not in presentation mode. I'm not sure if anybody else is seeing that, but I'm seeing just your not presentation mode on the first slide. Give me a second. Yeah. I will reshare. So if you share the, the, the screen that has your presentation mode. There we go. So we haven't been seeing your screen, oh, but now we do. Apologies. Now, I've been talking nicely your, on that. <laughs> now we see your white screen. The, OK, there yeah. we go. So in terms of the Western Cape, thanks, Rashid. In terms of the Western Cape's recent trade performance, so looking over the last, um, what is it, about a, a 10 years, so trade challenges, currently there is uncertain global economic condition, including one from the Russia invasion Ukraine that has had major impact with regards to various supply chain shifts, the slow Chinese economy post um, pandemic recovery, uncertainties in terms of the post FED raises, uh, raising interest rates in America specifically, uncertain pertaining to AGOA. So this was already identified um, probably about a year or two ago as a risk. And then in terms of the uh, where we are with regards to the, the um, province's exports, that amount to about 162 billion in 2022. It was up marginally from 146 billion rand earnings in 2021. So there has been an, a, an increase in terms of our exports um, from the Western Cape. Looking at imports, because you have to look at it at both sides, it contributed um, in turn contributed the upward trend slightly more from 144 billion in 22 up from the 30 billion in 2022. So there, there's been an increase with regards to our imports. The province's imports is more in terms of than it exports. So you have to look at that from a trade balance perspective. And that's really been with regards to the volumes of petroleum that we we um, that we export as well and import. So that's quite important to note. So, but if you look, if you exclude petroleum products in terms of our, our trade balance, there is definitely a, a trade surplus in the last four to five years. And our export figures has been affected in terms of um, COVID. So there was two years where there wasn't the normal sort of trends that we usually see. In 2022, wine from fresh grapes was the second largest export from the province with a value of, uh, that was about, I think, 10 billion. And an oil refinery in Cape Town um, and the country's only gas to liquid GTL, um, GTL refinery in Mossel Bay are the main facilities in the Western Cape that's well established. So Astron, they've just gotten their refinery up and running recently, which is a good um, contributor to the Western Cape economy. And then, of course, fresh produce and agri-processing exports came in close in terms of a third and a fourth with regards to oranges. That's very much our citrus citrus industry, which I'm sure you've had numerous briefings on. I'm sure Bongisa will touch on that. So this just shows you the different aspects with regards to our trade performance. Then in terms of just to highlight from a, a export base, what are the big sort of uh, challenges that's being faced in the environment that we've got to respond to? The first thing is definitely in terms of the cost of the inefficiency of trade infrastructure from a logistics infrastructure perspective as well. Um, this can cause delays. Um, already there's there's the concern about the failure in terms of certain rail networks. So our earlier briefing this week 
talked about what the work that we're doing in the port of Cape Town, but that's one element in terms of that's quite critical with regards to, to export infrastructure. The second challenge is in terms of the insuff um, insufficient knowledge, experience and supply when it comes to accessing international markets. So this really talks about the fact that if we want to grow our export base, we have to make sure that the exporters and the entrepreneurs who are at the heart of it or have the knowledge and the, the know-how in terms of navigating not just the traditional European markets, but new emerging markets and market access is quite key. The third challenge is in terms of the navigating tariffs, standards and other regulatory barriers. And this is exactly what a GOA is in terms of what does that mean? How do I access it? What does it mean if it comes to an end? And um, because at the end of the day, it, it has a massive impact in terms of costs that are um, carried by the entrepreneur, the exporter. The fourth challenge is in terms of securing Western Cape representational national programs and policies. So traditionally, provinces hasn't really had a seat at the table with regards to trade negotiations because it's it's definitely a, a national um, mandate. But with regards to where we can influence and the work that we've been doing there, it's in terms of how do we actually influence and, and start working collectively with other provinces, which we've started doing in terms of Eastern Cape, Kauteng, as well as KZN, in terms of the, the export policies and programs, specifically with DTRC, who are our counterparts. And then the fifth challenge is in terms of the resource constraints. So this is with regards to exporters, they must source information, they need to know, um, how, it's, it's just in terms of how do we actually resource the, the exporters more effectively and provide as much support as what we can, especially when other support programs that is on offer um, in terms of national government is being, there's, there's so many fiscal constraints, it's being cut, so it's becoming expensive for, for entrepreneurs and we, which we're trying to attract new entrepreneurs into the, the, the field. Then flipping the other side of the coin in terms of the opportunities. So it's not just doom and gloom, but from a Western Cape perspective, opportunities in terms of having a strong linkages to growing African economy, whether that's through the African Free Trade Continental Agreement or um, where we've already seen that the Western Cape in particular has strong um, and leading export routes into different specifically in terms of sub-Saharan African um, trade markets. So this is a key linkage and a strength that we have. The second opportunity is in terms of the preferential access to most major markets. Uh, so there's a numerous number of trade agreements that we do have a preferential treatment on, which offers opportunities to our export base. Third opportunity is in terms of a global competitive services sector. So it's not just exporting goods, but also services where we, we've definitely seen a tremendous uptake in terms of that. Some examples I can give you is in terms of the fintech industry, BPO, ICT, and green tech businesses. And um, we are doing a lot of work and West Coast established a, a tech desk in terms of that to start unpacking the services opportunity and how do we, we unplug that more effectively. And then the fourth opportunity is in terms of establishing the competitive and active export and investor base. So we do have networks, we have export um, councils in numerous industries. So there, there's, there's definitely an advantage in terms of that the industries are getting organized and getting the right platforms um, supported to unlock this opportunity. So in short, the, the goal is to triple exports by 2035. Um, this is a, a tremendous, I think it's about 270 um, billion rand that we, we want to add to the, the economy. Um, it's the contributors towards this export goal is both from a good services and a tourism perspective. And last but not least, I just wanted to mention that why is the US, so taking all of this into consideration, uh, we've looked at the, the different markets in, in globally in terms of their contribution and the, the US has definitely been growing in terms of, of being a trade uh, route, both from mostly what we're looking at from an export perspective, as well as a tourism perspective, perspective. and I've shown you the value that that adds to our foreign direct um, of foreign currency into the the the, um, the country and um, the Western Cape, so it's therefore it's, it's a strategic market both from an export investment and tourism perspective. It provides uh, the West Group presentation will provide you with feedback in terms of the current trade activity and and just um, focus a little bit more in terms of the actual contribution and what does a goer actually mean from a from a financial perspective and an economic perspective, and that exports will become an even bigger provincial priority as was highlighted by, both by myself and Rashid in terms of G4J. So, uh, Chairperson, on that note, I'm just going to hand over to Corin. Um, I'm sure we'll take the questions collectively. 
Thanks, Corin. Thanks, Jose. And good morning again, everybody. Um, I will, the next slide, Ilza. Just uh, very briefly, again, just showing the different areas where Westgro uh, focuses. So being the official tourism, trade and investment promotion agency for the Western Cape and Cape Town, we focus on the investment, um, so attracting investment, but also retaining investment. So, and, and part of this is looking at the competitiveness of the region as a investment destination. So, so what do we need to do to compete with investment from around the world in order to be able to attract investment? Um, from the trade promotion point of view, we we work to help exporters break into new markets um, and to develop the local export base in the Western Cape, so to help small businesses to become export ready. And then on the tourism side, I'm, I'm specifically going to focus on investment and trade today because that is where AGOA has the most impact. Um, we also do tourism promotion and facilitation. We have a, a very strong marketing team who is increasingly looking at innovation um and yeah so that's that's the broad focus of of Westgrow and i'm and i'm going to delve into investment and trade um with as it pertains to agoa so it was the next slide um the main thing to keep in mind when we're talking about agoa is on the one hand our export competitiveness and on the other hand our investment competitiveness because it really does touch on both of these um so just the overview of agoa itself it is a unilateral trade preference program. So very important to keep in mind, AGOA is not a trade agreement. It is not an agreement that was negotiated between different states or parties. It is a, a United States piece of legislation um, which, which provides duty-free access for a number of sub-Saharan African countries. This means that it is in the hands of the United States legislators um, and administrators in order to to carry out and to renew and to ensure, you know, it's, um, basically th there's not a lot of negotiation that goes on here and it's not set in stone. It is It can be changed by legislators. Um, AGOA builds upon a system called the General System of Preferences, which is referred to as GSP. GSP is a program that exists under the WTO, the World Trade Organization um, umbrella, whereby developed countries can give duty-free access to developing countries. Um, a number of developed countries have this program. They can specify the specific countries, how they implement the program, and also which pro products uh, receive duty-free access under GSP. So the United States has a GSP program. It allows duty-free access to developing countries of, that they have designated from around the world. And then AGOA is a, almost sort of a top-up agreement on top of this, which is provided to specific sub-Saharan African countries. GSP, so in order to qualify for AGOA, you need to qualify for GSP, um, which is quite key in terms of how AGOA fits in. Um, GSP is also divided into least developed and developing countries. So certain least developed countries get more access under GSP uh, than developing countries. So South Africa qualifies as a developing country for GSP purposes and then for AGOA. So what AGOA does is it, it almost concretizes the GSP program and it expands it for countries like South Africa who would otherwise not have access to those uh, duty-free products under the least developed GSP program. Sorry, I know this is all, a bit, um, <laughs> but it just it just shows the base um, on what we're building on here. So it's important to keep in mind that AGOA is is a piece of legislation which speaks to a certain number of of tariff lines, which builds upon other systems. When you look at the United States's uh, tariff schedule, about thirty eight percent of those tariff lines are already duty free. For anybody, then you have another amount of tariff lines, and AGOA is divided into different layers of application. Altogether, if you qualify for all of the AGOA benefits, 97% of tariff lines are duty free into the United States, and we we have that. Um, we we there's a specific third country fabric provision which we don't have for textiles, which means we can't source. Um, in very very basically speaking, we can't source certain inputs on textiles from 
third countries, which are not AGOA countries, uh, which is why our textile program isn't as big under AGOA as certain other countries in sub-Saharan Africa. But essentially, we have access to 97% of tariff lines duty-free into the United States because of AGOA. Um, AGOA provides a lot more certainty than GSP would have because AGOA gets renewed for a certain amount of years. The last time it was renewed, it was for 10 years, whereas GSP is often renewed sort of every two years, um, even once a year. And at the moment, it has not been authorized. So since 20, beginning of 2021, there has been no GSP except for AGOA countries. So it's not a very reliable fallback at this point, is really the, the, the long and the short of it. Um, in order to qualify for a GOA um, ben uh, benefits, a product needs to, um, at least 35% of the product's value has to have been grown, produced and manufactured in an AGOA eligible country. What this means also is that you can create regional value chains. So um, we can source products from other AGOA countries and export it under AGOA to the United States. There are certain eligibility criteria. I'm sure you've all heard of these under AGOA. So on the one hand, it's a program which is set in law. And it, it, as I said, it's about 10 years the last time. It's been going since 2000. It gets renewed every now and then. But besides that, every year there's an eligibility review for countries who are members of AGOA. And in that eligibility review, which is run by the United States uh, Trade Representative, the USTR, they have hearings and they look at specific criteria which is set out in law um, under AGOA. And those criteria are divided into various uh, categories. They look at the economic sort of market operating area, uh, market operations, of a of a country and they look at barriers to US trade. They look at the political situation, they look at poverty reduction, at labor and at human rights and terrorism and security. Um, under these criteria, they also mention uh, alignment with American foreign policy. So there is potentially an issue there where this is um, eligibility criteria, but it depends. Um, and then I think it's important to also keep in mind that less than 1% of US imports come from um, under the AGOA program. So it's not, a, it's not a, a big competitiveness challenge to American industries. All right, next slide. So South Africa is uh, by far the, the biggest utilizer of AGOA. Um, as you can see, 43% of, um, it, it accounted for 43% of, of imports to the US under AGOA last year, according to 2021. Next slide. So this is the, the, the top exports from South Africa into the USA under AGOA. Um, as you can see, the motor cars are, are by far the biggest beneficiary, or the, or the automotive industry is a very big beneficiary of a goer. Um, and I think we can move to the next one. So, so this is what I really wanted to show is even if utilization is not high. So over the last 20 years, South Africa's utilization has been about 30 percent, 31 percent of utilizing the, the, the program. But what's important is that at a sector level, um, it's, it, it's very important. So in the sectors that qualify for AGOA, it is, it's, it's utilized quite heavily um, and our exports rely heavily on AGOA for, to be competitive in the United States. So agricultural products, for instance, 70% of South Africa's agricultural exports to the United States went under AGOA. Um, footwear is also, it also utilizes it quite strongly. Um, manufacturing products, forest products, textiles and apparel and chemicals. And what's also important to, to take into account is some of these are finished products, but some of them are also products that are, that are inputs into American um, industries. So American industry 
also benefits a lot from this because they are able to source inputs at a, at a competitive um, rate. I think one of the dangers when it comes to our competitiveness with um, with competitive countries. So if you look at citrus, for instance, we export duty free under a go, but our main competitors all have free trade agreements with America. So Chile, Colombia, Peru, Morocco, um, these are competitors. And so if we are to lose a go of benefits, then and we don't have a free trade agreement with the United States, which we don't, then our products would be less competitive in comparison to other imports we, who we know we're competing with. Many of them are also closer to market. So the tariff um, reduction that we get under a go plays a very big difference or makes a very big difference specifically in certain sectors where those tariffs are quite high without the benefit because a lot of our import, a lot of our competitors on the, on the importing front um, into the market duty free. Okay, next slide. So the, the, this just shows that the Western Cape is a, a very a, a big utilizer and benef beneficiary of the Goa. So these are out of the top 10 South African exports under a Goa, these five qualify, um, these, sorry, I'm talking to the next slide. <laughs> this is the one I should be talking to. So these are, this just shows the percentage of our top exports which come from the Western Cape. So you can see for citrus, um, there's a specific uh, protocol that allows Western Cape and Northern Cape citrus into the US. So a lot of the Western Cape um, citrus is is destined for the US or it's a very, it's a, the, the market is set up um, and benefits greatly from a goer. Wine is a big beneficiary, uh, a big beneficiary. Um, and then you have engine parts and yachts, um, which are also very big beneficiaries and contribute a lot to South Africa's utilization of a go. Next slide. This shows. Um, so we, you can't, you can't measure uh, the data. Doesn't exist to look at uh, actual utilization at a provincial uh, level, but if you. By virtue of it being eligible, you can see the and and um, because the tariffs are, are quite high, most of these exports are probably claiming the preferences. Um, and again, just showing you know the the citrus industry is very important here, the yachts, the engine parts, um, wine. What you don't see here is some of the other um, exports which are growing really quickly. So dried fruit, preserved fruit. Um, these are all these are all exports that are growing fast into the US. Next slide. And then just to close off with, um, so Wisco has done some surveys with exporters, and we have found the, the the results have shown that a lot of our small exporters really benefit from this program. Um, we had we we also. Had, Try to understand how important the U.S. market is for exporters, and of everybody who replied to this to the survey, 80% of them viewed the USA as a priority market for growth of their businesses. Now, this included exporters that weren't yet exporting to the U.S., um, but they they are hoping to, and they uh, everybody views the U.S. as a priority market. The reason why it is such a lucrative market is because of the scale you can achieve in the U.S. and also. It, it's a premium export market, so um, you, you get premium prices there. 60% um, of exporters indicated that they utilize the GOA, which is quite high. Um, and then more than 80 showed that a high percentage of the exports benefit from a GOA. So remember, in order to benefit from a GOA, the product needs to, to, to be eligible. And you need to meet the the rules of origin, which means the 35% that is manufactured or grown um, in a Nagoya country. Um, more than 60, almost 70% of of those who export to the US indicated that Nagoya had a significant impact on the growth of their business. And again, just showing that small businesses um, were were even more um, the growth of small businesses. Um, relied even more on a go than than the rest, and I think that is it.
Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so with that, we will now open up for members to ask any questions that they might have. Members, if you can use the raise hand function to indicate if you have any questions. I see a hand from Member Seleko. Yeah, good morning, Chair, and thank you very much to to the presenters for the presentation. And Chair, what one can take out from the from both presentation, it's the contribution that Agoa plays within the Western Cape, and no one can actually doubt that the the relations or the relationship. Uh, between what AGOA offers to African countries has a lot of benefits within the Western Cape. And mm, noting that what has been said in the media, you know, of the potential threat that we might not renew uh, uh, AGOA with the, within the Western Cape, uh, can the department just share, you know, with uh, with me, you know, what could be the implications of of such an action should uh, South Africa not be part of the agreement with AGOA and, and how will it affect the most vulnerable and especially in the business? Now, that's my first question, um, Chair. And also looking at the threat of that happening, what is it that the department it will be uh, doing to make to try, you know, and remedy or and try and rescue or try to save whatever potential might come for us not being beneficiaries uh, beyond 2025. And secondly, Chair, there's about five challenges that has been mentioned. And, you know, and one would appreciate that that they have been flagged with us. One would also would like to know in terms of dealing with these particular challenges, specifically looking at challenge number four, where the provincial government, you know, within the Western Cape is not part of the, you know, of the, is not part of the national, you know, uh, interventions when it comes to, to trading. You know, what is it that the department is doing to try and lobby for a place, you know, on the table? So that because uh, you know we are one of the contributors within the economy of the country as the Western Cape, and one would only want to be part, you know, one would want to secure a seat on the national, you know, space, you know, even though we are a province on our own. And I would just like to know what is it that has been done by the department, you know, to lobby, you know, using their persuasive powers to make sure that we actually get that particular seat so that we can also have a, you know, a voice in terms of uh, what might happen. That will be all, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see no other hands. Um, I have a few questions myself, but I'll break it up. Um, so my first question to the department is if we could get a bit more information, preferably numerical, on the survey of businesses that WESCRO conducted, um, so I'd essentially, I'd like to see the full results and particularly the impact that that will have on employment. Then um, GSP, um, I'm quite new to this concept. So if you could just expand on the requirements for South Africa and why it hasn't been renewed, what have been the challenges there? And then for me, I think this is actually one of the more important questions um, is what provisions under AGOA would the department and WESCO ideally like to be expanded? Um, and the reason I ask this as well is because when we had the department brief us on G4J, they, they explained that one of the risks in terms of our um, economy as a whole is that we are so focused on agriculture and we need to take more of a differentiated approach to the industries that we have in our province. And so, would the expansions that we might want to see within AGOA maybe include um, greater support for other industries like film, for example? Right, with that, I'll hand back to the department and to Wesker. Hey, thank you. Thanks, um, Chairperson and Honorable um, Member Seleko. So, um, 
uh, Elsa and um, Karen, you know, you two need to put on your cameras because you're the experts. <laughs> In fact, Karen, um, Karen, I know you actually spent time when after you were graduated as a lawyer in the US. So you must have been quite close to some of these negotiations. I'm keen to hear how that was spending time in Washington, DC. I know this is not about that, but you, you might have been quite close to this. Um, Elsa, I, I was wondering if overall, so Member Seleko, um, we, we, will, we can certainly share with you the results, or, or in fact, that was the chairperson, the results of the survey. Maybe we can touch on that today. And then if that's requested formally in writing, I imagine after the meeting, we can we can then share the survey results. But Ilsa, I wonder if you could just talk about this idea that we are wanting to expand our export base beyond agriculture, just that, that differentiation, that um, that fits in well with your export strategy. Maybe you could start with that question that the chairperson asked last, and then um, I hand over to you, Corin, if you want to answer some of the other more specific questions from Honourable Member Seleko around the risks to the province, and um, and also a little bit about what we're doing. What's the kind of um, routes that we have do have at our disposal to 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 actually make a bit of an impact? So, Elsa, could I ask? For you yeah. to answer some of that. Thank you. And then over to Karen. Sure. Thank you, Rashid. Um, thank you, Member Seleko. So in total, if I get it correctly, Karen can add, it's about $6.8 billion with regards to the total um, under AGOA that's being exported into the US. So you were talking about the impact um, in terms of the, the if the agreement was no longer there. That's quite difficult to ascertain. You can look at the current degree, uh, current trade activity that's happening. It's not that it will completely stop all, all exports into the US. It will just become more costly because similar to any trade agreement, you are then exporting under preferential tariff codes, meaning it's almost there's a there's a there's a discount per se. So there's there's definitely going to be additional costs. And what will happen is that the businesses will then who are trading in the US market will then have to absorb that. So your profit margin will will be less. So to calculate that, um would I would need to do some additional um research based on on, on that. But that is what it will actually mean. It'll become more expensive. And really that's that's why there's such a big outcry, especially in terms of what Corin mentioned with regards to it being a, a high value um market so there's a lot of um, profit that you are able to earn from that market and you'll just have to work so much harder because you're then going to be competing for the with the same commodity um, and making less money so then usually what we've seen the exporters will shift markets or, or they'll, they'll try and find a different way or are they able to become more efficient etc but it's it's not um, it's not the best situation to be in in terms of of, of supporting our exporters to, and growing that market in particular then with regards to the lobbying question, um, so definitely we've started work with the DTIC and are now at the point of trying to, to crowd in collaboration with the other provinces. So there's it's probably, as I mentioned, KZN, ourselves, Eastern Cape and Gauteng in terms of working with, with DTIC. We've got a meeting set up in July with them to start a provincial forum to talk about exports. We're not directly involved in terms of the trade agree uh, um, trade agreements with the, the negotiators per se, but it's about raising questions, etc. They usually engage directly with the, the export councils, with industry, uh, from a DTIC perspective. They do they do engage with 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 provinces, but it's not organised um, as well as it should be. So we're definitely lobbying them quite hard, um, as well as trying to encourage them to to be if for example we're trying now with with a goa to get them to come and talk to our exporters to um, provide feedback so to Im improve the communication not just with with the from a provincial perspective but also with our exporters in terms of communication and and just feedback so there's a lot of work that's being done both from submitting formal submissions to improving having a formal um, engagement etc because that's really what what i require in terms of moving forward not just from trade agreements but also with regards to trade barriers which often sit at a national government perspective and then in terms of the gsb renewal i'm going to give that one to karen and then the um the other aspect i wanted to talk about is just with regards to um the chairperson your comments in terms of 
the the growing export base. So under the, the it's still in draft. We're finalising it um, in terms of alignment with with Chief or Jay. With regards to the export strategy, we did a lot of work in terms of looking at new markets. And because you correctly said that in terms of the, the, the research that we've done is that we have to diversify. We Our export market has actually been, or basket has been shrinking over the last, let's say, 15 years. So, and we, we're getting a lot of value in terms of primary agriculture, but for our economy to become more competitive, we have to diversify and moving into primary and tertiary sectors. So that's definitely what we're doing, um, and it's already happening in terms of the, the export competitive enhancement program, um, work we're doing in terms of the services exports, um, looking at, at other export activities in terms of the manufacturing sectors, et cetera. So definitely looking at how do we support and access new markets with new products. And that is a medium to long term goal we have to achieve if we want to actually achieve that target of tripling exports. Corin, I don't know if you want to add to the other questions from Member Selec and Jay. Thank you. Sure, Elsa. Um, so we we'll start on the implications, just to add on, on in terms of implications, what Elsa said. Um, I think the, the implications are really, because AGOA is concentrated at a sector level, certain sectors, the, the implications will be um, more acute in certain sectors. and as we've seen in the Western Cape, so nationally, the automotive industry and entire value chain that leads into the automotive industry will be impacted. Um, the in the Western Cape, the agricultural industry and the boat building industry are actually both um, they're both big beneficiaries, and there are tariffs there, um, which would be which would come into play, and they're quite high um, in comparison. So, and those are labour intensive industries. So I think um, the impact is is a, it's a, in, a industry specific um, impact, and I think that our colleagues from the Department of Agriculture may well have more to say um, specifically around the impact on agriculture and the importance on agriculture. Um, I think it's also then important to note that uh, yeah, if if that market becomes less competitive, it's very important that we. Are assured access into other markets because we will have to diversify into other markets. Um, other markets might not carry the same premium, they might be smaller. Um, we may need, you know, there's a lot of sanitary and phytosanitary issues that may need to be sorted out. Um, we don't have a lot of trade agreements so, um, at the moment. You know, the EU is also a big market for citrus, for instance, but there are phyto and sanitary phyto uh, issues there. So, with the closure of the US, potentially. Um, I think the main issue, the main, the main point is that we would need new markets for our exports. We export about half of our agricultural production. Again, I'll let my my colleagues from from the Department of Agriculture speak to this. Um, but the impact uh, has various repercussions. Then, I think from okay, let me let me touch on uh, GSP first. So GSP, it, it wasn't not renewed for South Africa. The, the entire GSP program was not renewed. Um, so that had that wasn't in, in relation to South Africa specifically. It was um, it's got to do with US internal uh, trade policy and how they operate and how they provide authorization to certain programs through Congress. Um, so the entire GSP program was not authorized, was not reauthorized. The benefit of AGOA is that. GSP benefits continue for AGOA beneficiaries, even though the program as a whole was not reauthorized. It does happen quite often that it's not reauthorized. Usually when it is reauthorized, there is then a retrospective claiming of, of benefits. Um, there are currently bills before the American uh, Congress to, to reauthorize GSP again. Um, there was a review, so, so just before GSP authorization lapsed, it was actually a review of South Africa's eligibility under GSP, um, and that was in relation to the Copyright Amendment Bill and to intellectual property law protection. So, so South Africa is currently, in fact, under review for GSP criteria. And remember, in order to qualify for, G for AGOA, you need to qualify for, for GSP. Um, but because the program lapsed, uh, they aren't currently running with that um, investigation anymore. 
So uh, in terms of expanding upon AGOA, um, I think it's very important to take into context the continental um, context rather than looking just at the provincial context. Um, the drafters of AGOA way back when and everybody who's been implementing the program ever since and expanding on the program have all reiterated the importance of regional integration and how AGOA seeks to support in uh, developing intra-Africa trade and investment as well. And because we are now very close to seeing the Continental Free Trade Agreement actually coming into fruition, um, a lot of the dynamic has almost changed since 2000 when it was when AGOA was implemented because the continent is definitely consolidating and because that because of that it's becoming a, a more lucrative investment uh, destination if you if you're able to provide easier trade and investment opportunities across the continent it becomes a lot easier to create value chains across the continent and um, if you were to if South Africa were to lose its benefits under AGOA, it would very much undermine the regional um, integration objectives, both of the Continental Free Trade Agreement and of, of AGOA. And I think looking forward, you'll probably start seeing more of a sort of an AFCFTA uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement to US type of um, relationship rather than um, country to country. Just also taking in mind that, bearing in mind that South Africa, so there has been talk around, you know, free trade agreement with the USA. South Africa is part of a customs union. So South Africa is part of the South African Customs um, Union, Southern African Customs Union, which means we can't negotiate trade agreements as a country. We have to negotiate them. Trade agreements on goods as a, as a customs union. Um, and countries within the customs union have very different levels of development. Um, and those aspects all need to be taken into account in thinking about any type of future arrangement. Um, and then, yeah, just regarding the the survey, we 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 have to share those results. Um, I think I've covered everything. Hopefully. Thank you very much, members. Are there any follow up questions or any additional questions that you might have to DDAT or to Wisco? I see um, the acting HOD. I don't know if you'd like to come in first. Can I? Um, Chairperson, can I ask, a, it's funny to, for me to ask a question, but I wanted to ask Karen, when you say if I go with the implication, it, it doesn't mean we suddenly have to stop um, selling boats to the US. Does it simply mean the implication is it's much more, our product becomes immediately more expensive? I just wanted to clarify that because it doesn't mean you can't trade with the US, like keep sending your boats there. It just means it's considerably more expensive, which I imagine which just makes you less competitive, which could make you lose jobs and lose orders. Just wanted to just ask that specific nuance because I'm not aware of that. It, it sounds like it will the trade will kind of stop with the US, but I imagine it's more a cost impact. And and, and possibly how much is that cost impact? Uh, just wanted to clarify yeah, that. that might, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate and really value the interdepartmental accountability. With that, I'd also like to take a question from Member Seleko and then um, see if there are any others and then hand back to Carl. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, just to let you on to what the acting um, HOD asked, you know, I think he read my mind. Uh, you know, because what, what I want to appreciate is that you got preferential discounts when you, because of this agreement with AGOA for, for South African businesses. And, and, is there a potential, you know, should we should the agreement not be renewed within within us as a can as as a country, and we and of course it's going to be more costly for us should we show the businesses want to export, and when we don't get those preferential discount, uh, would one say that there is potential of businesses, you know, you know, closing down? you know, losing jobs, you know, and uh, yeah, those are just uh, uh, the, the questions that one would want to, to ask because, you know, every, even me, when I go to the shop, uh, you know, I first look, well, you know, if I can get it five rand le lesser, 
I would I would go there, you know, but yeah, everybody's looking for discount these days. And imagine people that have employees, you know, on their payroll and then should that, um, you know, that opportunity be taken away. Uh, you know, one would always want to know what would be the extreme, extreme, but, you know, uh, all the, uh, uh, challenge for that particular business. Thank you very much. I hope I'm clear enough, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so I just have one um, follow up in terms of my previous question and then two new questions. Um, so just on my question in terms of expanding provisions or lobbying for the expansion of provisions under GOA, I wasn't quite clear which which particular components of GOA um, we might lobby to expand on. Um, for example, is my fisheries being an area that we'd want to expand on? Um, I understand that this is an agricultural act. And then I understand that the minister and the premier have now embarked um, on their own visits to the US. Um, and one of the issues that they're going to be picking up on is the GOA. If we could just get a bit more information on the objectives um, of their mission. And then um, I did note the the concern about many of our competitors having free trade um, agreements with the US. Now, I know as a as a provincial um, government, we can't enter into um, an FTA with the US. But my question is whether the department could also play a lobbying and advocacy role for a similar FDA and whether this is something that they've looked at previously. With that, I'll hand back to the department. Thank you. And thank you, Chairperson. I am um, so current. Karan, if you, you, you'll answer the one which I was reading Member Seleko's mind on, the, the one about the actual impact. And then, Ilsa, could you just touch on the kind of what lobbying we, we, we have been able to do and possibly what the aim of the USA trip is and what we could achieve on that, on that journey? Sure. Karan, should we go over to you first? Sure, yeah. Um, okay, no, the market's not going to close. So you Dead right. Um, we're just going to be less competitive. So what will happen? You lose the, the the preference. So for every export or yeah, for every export into the US, there'll be you'll pay a little bit more. Um, in some cases, it's it's a little bit more. For some products, it's a lot more. Um, of course, the more you're exporting and the higher the value of the product, potentially the higher the tariff. Um, so I think from analysis, it shows that wine, for instance, carries quite a high tariff. Um, so the wine industry may be, may be impacted through uh, the fact that the tariff on wine into the US is, is potentially a, a bit higher than, than tariffs on some other products. Um, so the, the market will not close. It will just become less, com less competitive. Um, and as was said, you know, we do look for discounts. So it may well then be that U.S. importers may look to similar products from markets from which they can source the products um, more competitively, especially if those countries have free trade agreements with the U.S. and are, you know, maybe they're closer. So the market won't close, no. Then the question of, I think another another important point just on the competitiveness issue is you know, tariff is one aspect of being competitive. Um, but I think what Ilsa showed right in the beginning in terms of the different, the way we looked under the export strategy at um, GPJ at the competitiveness issues of our exports, it's not only tariffs. Um, input costs, the, the, the price at which you're able to produce and manufacture, um, a lot of that also has to do, and transport, a lot of it has to do with, you know, a lot of the competitiveness issues lie at home. So, Transport, ports, price of energy, energy, um, all of these things are, are, they all play a role in the competitiveness of the product. Um, and then in terms of, again, in terms of the expansion, just to, just to go back to the, to the expansion, we, we are busy looking at product specific, um, export opportunities into the US and 
the thing is you need to try and you need to understand so so there are various sectors in which we know there's there's big export potential into the US market um we we're, we're busy running um more of an analysis to see because 97% of products are already duty free into the US it's you know a go expansion at a sector specific re, um when you're looking at only goods and you're looking at tariffs on products there are certain uh, products we export where we do pay tariffs but we need to do a bit more analysis in terms of those products that really have export potential into the US, um, whether we are in fact paying tariffs on them now. And in that case, um, definitely look at a renewed a lobby into a renewed ago expanding on certain products where tariffs are paid at the moment and where there is export potential, um, particularly also linked to you know job jobs in that industry. So. Uh, there isn't a clear answer on that at this particular moment, but we are busy looking into the overlap of export potential into the US and then where we are currently paying tariffs, where there is export potential. The when I, I think film was mentioned earlier, so that's a different story. So there is talk of looking at a at a more comprehensive and a different type of trade arrangement with the United States. So AGOA only applies to goods. Um, U.S. free trade agreements tend to include more broadly digital trade, services trade, investment, um, and so at the moment we don't have any any agreement on services or digital trade um, per se with the U.S. And that would that would have to be, I think, again looking at the objectives of the Continental Free Trade Agreement, looking at um, SADC as a whole, looking at South Africa and really understanding, um, you know, what we would be willing to, because if you negotiate a free trade agreement, it's reciprocal, you have to open your market as well. So at the moment with AGOA, um, we don't pay duties going in, entering the US market, but they pay duties for their goods into, this, into the South African market. Um, when you start negotiating an agreement, you need to open your own market as well. So it's it's going to take a bit of research um to understand what the impacts would be you know what the impacts will be of of uh, i think the the good thing about a free trade agreement is that it's it's much more permanent and you're not constantly under review um but on the on the other hand it is reciprocal and we need to understand the impact of that on our domestic market as well um chief i can just add Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you. So, in terms of the, um, I'm just going to touch on what Corin said, and then I'll go back to the the lobbying in the US. So, um, as I mentioned, and as Corin mentioned, we've we've div um, commissioned research about a year and a half ago in terms of product complexity mapping, to actually answer the question with regards to as a, as a province in a country in terms of where do we have competitive advantage. And where do we diversify export basket? So looking at it at a HS code level, um, and this was mostly in terms of goods, because that data doesn't isn't as accessible for services in terms of how the trade is actually um, coded and and then monitored from an export perspective. So this gave us is given us a view and a lens in terms of opportunities from a medium to a short term in terms of. These are export commodities, they're ready, they're market ready, but there's a lot of trade happening and where we can export into the world of the same commodity that we are really good with. So that's given us a, a lens in terms of short-term opportunities. Then in terms of medium-term opportunities, this was where we're saying there's, minimum, there's, there's trade happening, but not a lot, but we've got a competitive advantage in terms of we can produce this or manufacture this and export. So this is some of the work we're doing in terms of growing that number of commodities where we've got a competitive advantage and working with existing companies in the Western Cape in terms of saying, OK, you're already manufacturing, um, let's say you're making um, uh, jerseys, for example. And this is a, a particular example of an export opportunity in our medium term baskets is apparel, outerwear. This is a is an opportunity we've identified for the U.S. market. And how do we get them to become more competitive? Is it with regards to a trade barrier? Is it with regards to I need more machinery? Is it with regards to um, 
I need to I need to know how do I quote or it's market access or etc. So there's a whole range of aspects you have to look at in terms of making sure um, businesses are export ready, and then that can be passed on to Westcote in terms of market access to move them into I'm now export ready. I can go to a trade show and actually land a deal and deliver etc. So there's different commodities under a goer. It's not all under a goer. It's actually we, I'm just talking about as the US in general from. And I don't want to, this is all still, we need to form and finalize it, but there was a short term from wine, more wine, jewelry, engine parts, fruits, juices, chemicals, clothing apparel, pa uh, plastics, fish, etc. So these are some of the examples of opportunities that we're doing. We're now in our second phase of research in terms of those with mapping them with actual businesses and to, to understand who are they, where are they, and what's their support level in terms of accessing different markets across the globe. So what the, the 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 tool that we have has given us a lens in terms of what does it mean in terms of us saying we want to triple exports and what are the commodities and then linking it to different markets. So we now have the ability to say in the across the world, where do we want to position um, the Western Cape with from an export potential perspective over the next 15 years? So that's really helped us with with that. So these particular commodities for the U.S. as well. And then in terms of the member select or with regards to the lobbying and the, the U.S. trip. So that's quite critical in terms of securing um, confidence, building confidence, as as uh, was mentioned previously by Corin and, and Rashid, in terms of maintaining good trade relationships with key businesses. And I think that that's very much I can't speak on behalf of of my of, 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 of premier minister, et cetera. But that's very much the objective, I believe, in terms of the, the delegation going in terms of um, dealing with concerns, um, positioning, uh, meeting with with existing and new um, um, investors and businesses, et cetera, and positioning the, the Western Cape continually again in terms of a, from a confidence perspective or both from a, a trade, travel and an investment perspective. So so that's very much in terms of the type of businesses that and and key stakeholders that will be will be engaged with, which is quite critical, um, not just under Goa, which is definitely currently a, a concern uh, for for many of our of our businesses, but also in terms of our other programs, um, in terms of tra um, tourism and investment in particular. And then of course the lobbying activity um, um, that will happen post this is, is is quite key with regards to Goa, and we'll continue with the work. Um, and we we definitely engage in particularly with DTIC. They are our counterpart parts in particular with regards to trade negotiations and there's ongoing activity we're doing behind the scenes in terms of working with them. And as I said, we are meeting with them in um, July um, to take the conversation um, forward as well. And I know Minister Winger is is she's got particular actions that she's doing as well in terms of this. And then of course just highlighting the from both from the survey that Cara mentioned in terms of the the um, AGOA impacts, um, but if we we want to increase the awareness in terms of the impact of AGOA on our on our businesses, so there'll be different communications that'll also be issued. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. All right, members, I'll just do a last check and see if there are any final questions for the department or for Westcro. I see member van der Vestesen. Yes, good morning, Chair, and thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we didn't, didn't quite get the at, at, at typical tariffs that are being charged by the USA, uh, but perhaps you could just confirm then uh, the price elasticity in terms of the export market. I presume that because one is not only competing with yourself, but you're competing with the rest of the world, or in the case of agricultural products, with the rest of the same, uh, southern hemisphere, perhaps uh, uh, the price elasticity may be quite high uh, for for competing on the international market and, and for importing into the USA. So perhaps if you could just speak a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, what what a small change in the import costs would mean for South African products, uh, and then secondly, the cost of 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 shipping your products to the USA, 
and particularly transporting it to the to the west coast of the of the USA, uh, which is it seems to me the the biggest market if you look at the uh, t turnover of, of or the gross domestic product of a state like California. Uh, if you could just help us understand, you know, what is the the cost component of 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 getting your goods to the USA, whether it's by ship or by air. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Member. I don't have any further questions on my hand, and I don't see any further hands, so I'll hand over to the department. Thank you, Honourable Member van der Westesen. It's a good, it's a very good question, and I'd like to see if Elsa or um, or Corin could answer that 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 economics question of the price elasticity. I would I would venture to say, and maybe Bongiswa can answer this as well. That for certain products, if you like the quality and the taste of South African wine, you might be fine with paying extra. But maybe if you have to make a choice between a South African orange and a South African a Spanish or Chinese orange, you might be less inclined to just suddenly pay 50% more. So I imagine the price elasticity is quite varied um, uh, depending on the type of product. And um, so could I hand over to Karen or Ilsa, if, if either of you want to answer that question. And then the cost of the shipping, I'm not actually really sure what component of, what component of the cost of a landed product is shipping. Ilsa, if you could venture to answer that, or if we can't, we can always find that answer and come back to you, Member Van der Westesen. Ilsa, should I hand over to you first? Sure. I think what, uh, let me rather not take a estimate. So as I said, it depends on the weight, it depends on the commodity, it depends on, on numerous factors, uh, but we could take our top um, sort of commodities and then I can check in with a, with a particular shipping agent or a freight forwarder and give and rather come back to the committee in terms of sort of a, a um, average cost in terms of if I had to ship a container, what would it cost, et cetera, um, to, I know uh, in terms of the different routes, that would be my my suggestion before I, uh, I'll be, uh, I don't have the, the, the exact amount um, with me at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Karen, would you do you have any potential answer to that, or, uh, or or would you also like us to defer it to answering it with full information? Um, uh, I'll defer that one to the economists. Chairperson, is that okay? Can we hand it back to you? Yes, I believe that'll be an order. I'm speaking on behalf of Member Van der Westen, but I'm sure he would also appreciate. Um, a more detailed response that's been vetted by your economist. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll now move on to the next part of the presentation. Um, I'll hand over to Ms. Mtoti, but perhaps, <laughs> perhaps I can ask as well um, if you could stay online, the department and Whisker, in case there are any connecting questions um, that will follow thereafter. All right. Um, over to you, Ms. Matotti. Thanks, Chair. I just want to check now if you can see the presentation. Yes, I can see it. It's just not in. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Is, is is it now on on presenter? It's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um. Good morning, member, and good morning, uh, to uh the the all the members actually of the committee and also my colleagues actually at Economic Development and Westgrow. I am going to be zooming, you know, into agriculture, and I like the fact that my colleagues actually have really given a, a, a broader context in terms, actually, of our export performance, actually, for the province, and also, you know, touching base also on, 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 on some, you know, generic information on, on, on AGOA. 
But I think what I can actually perhaps, you know, mention on the left side, uh, Karen has done a brilliant job, has explained actually almost everything. But I think I want to bring the attention to the graph, sorry, to the to the to the map and to say on the map, not all African countries have got um, access to 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 AGOA. Um, as we can see um, on the top there, um, that you know uh, the grey ones they currently do not actually have got um, access to 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 Agoa. It's either they never had it or they are actually suspended. And um, the light blue here are your are your countries that actually have got you know um, eligibility, but there is actually exclusion of the apparent preferences. While the the the, the deeper the deeper blue. Is the is the Agoa eligibility, but it includes the 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 apparel uh, preferences um, and also using the third country fabric that, that that is actually allowed. And then the bottom here, where South Africa actually is, is the the Agoa. Uh, 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 eligibility and um, it includes apparel preferences, but exclude uh, fabric actually from the from the third country. But um, of key importance is the fact that beneficiaries change from time to time as they are actually being reviewed actually on an annual basis actually by uh, 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 the US. Um, to support the statement, actually on the on the sort of sort on the on, on the uh, uh, the slide that I just actually presented, um, on this table actually in here is the list actually of those countries that actually have lost actually their Agoa eligibility status starting from 2003, and you know uh, they vary you know according to 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 the years. And on the further right on this table, it explains the reason why those countries actually have lost actually their eligibility. Um, stating uh, that is actually from uh, coup, the human rights abuses, the political violence and armed conflict um, in some countries, uh, labor rights actually issues, with the exception actually of one country that is actually on this list, that is actually Seychelles, that actually has graduated actually out of, you know, um, Agoa. There was nothing wrong with it, but it's just actually a very good actually indication that the country actually has grew and it actually graduated actually out of Agoa. Uh, some important concerns and 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 considerations that um, we actually have to take note of is that uh, South African exports to the U.S. have been increasing since Agoa was extended uh, by ten years. That is actually now from 2015. Karen actually has highlighted actually that on her presentation as well. But of importance as well is that agricultural exports to the U.S. they continued actually to rise even during you know the the COVID-19 uh, 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 pandemic. And um, another concern and consideration is the fact that AGOA expires in about 18 months, you know, uh, uh, time. And again, you know, a major concern is the fact that extension is not guaranteed. And um, another consideration is the fact that African Union Commission has made a proposal for inclusive arrangements within the U.S. And the bottom um, graph actually on the left, sorry, on the right, is just actually showing the total exports, you know, uh, to, 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 to the U.S., while the top, you know, uh, smaller part actually shows the, the total agricultural export. And um, Karen has shown, you know, the entire list actually of all the products that I actually sent to the US because I'm now actually going to be focusing mainly on, on, on agricultural products actually for my for my presentation. Um, just actually to reflect this actually on, 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 on a graph, one can actually see that uh, since 2000, um, really our exports started actually changing, you know, um, uh, uh, to the US since we've actually joined Agro Agoa, but of more importance is actually to start actually just checking actually from two, 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 2015, where one can see that actually our agricultural exports actually to the US have actually started increasing, you know, um, a, a, a exponentially as, 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 as the country. In terms actually of the product categories, um, your, your edible fruit and nuts uh, category have been actually increasing, you know, uh, uh, exponentially. That's actually where your citrus and, 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 and other fruit actually is. And that is actually followed by beverages, spirits and, and vinegar. That's actually where our wines are. 
and then thirdly followed by preparations of vegetable fruits in terms of categories and lastly actually the fish and actually crustaceans those are actually the the, the product categories that really have been you know uh, observed in terms actually of exponential increase to the to the us since the the, the, the past 10 years um on on the products in 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 particular we still um under you know uh, is still under south africa's agricultural exports to 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 the us um as i've indicated in terms of the of the categories and uh one can see you know which products actually have been you know uh growing um over the 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 the, the past 5 years since 2017 you've got your edible fruit and nuts there you've got your preparations at 34% you've got your miscellaneous edible uh, preparations and uh, raw hides and skins are actually on that list and uh, live trees and other products are actually also on the on, on the list but of importance is actually on the feather rights actually the share uh, uh, percentage uh, meaning that we are actually exporting more you know um, actually of our edible fruit and nuts uh, 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 to the US because 42 percent um, as a share is not actually a small a small percentage. Coming straight actually to the Western Cape so that you can see what is actually happening, you know, within within the province, the edible fruits and nuts again are taking a huge, you know, uh, share of actually of our exports, uh, uh, sorry, of South Africa's exports to the US because of the number that you've seen on the other side, 40% actually of those uh, uh, exports are from the, the, the Western Cape. And in terms actually of the growth, the growth actually has been marvelous in here is 27%, but there's actually other uh, uh, product categories that actually have been experiencing actually more growth. That is the preparations of vegetables, fruit and nuts actually at 50%. I, I also see like um, at the bottom, if you look actually at the bottom, the lake, gums, raisins and other vegetable subs category, there has been actually exponential growth in here actually of about um, 127 uh, 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 percent. So um, and then there's miscellaneous edible preparations also at 71 percent. So that actually tells you that, um, you know, the Western Cape really has been, you know, uh, gaining momentum and actually has been actually, you know, are uh, benefiting from this and of course you can see on your on your right your top five you know uh products that, that actually have got the biggest share actually of exports you know to the us from 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 this province in terms actually of looking into the risk in particular and and maybe this might actually get to answer you know um some actually of the questions that have been asked actually by the by the members you, you, if you look actually on your top uh, 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 left, we, we've done a, a calculation of the top 25 Western Cape agricultural exports to the US based actually on the 2022 uh, uh, estimates. Um, with the tariff, uh, uh, sorry, with the tariff actually under AGOA, the, the the implication in 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 here uh, of the tariff that we're actually paying is about 0.6 percent, and and that is actually about 26 you know a uh, a uh, 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 million you know uh, implication vis-a-vis -vis if we are actually uh, 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 without uh, without actually the 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 agoa it means that the implication is even much more because the implication will be actually 5.6% uh, 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 and the, the 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 cost actually in there will be about 267 million rands and then on the on the right um, it's the same situation when we look actually into broader agricultural exports from a South African context is that the implications actually of a tariff actually under AGOA is, is only 0.9%, while actually without AGOA is 4.4%. But of importance is that if you look into the left, that is now the Western Cape versus uh, 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 South Africa, is that 5.6, you know, uh, percent implication without AGOA for the Western Cape is far much higher than the 4.4 percent actually of agricultural exports from South Africa in general, meaning that the Western Cape will be the most affected actually as compared, you know, to, 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 to the rest, you know, um, of South Africa in this regard. 
And then at the bottom is just actually to, just just to give an indication actually of the total value of Western Cape total agricultural exports to the U.S. You know, uh, for the 25 product, products that have been actually uh, selected, which is actually about 3.8, that is to about 4. Point, uh, sorry, to, to about 4 billion, and vis-a-vis -vis the total value of of SA total agricultural exports of um, 8.3. But of importance actually in here is that out of actually this value of South Africa, the share actually of the Western Cape in here is about 46 percent. That's actually how significant you know uh, our agricultural exports are you know um, uh, uh, to the US you know um, compared to the rest actually of South Africa. If you look further onto the to, into the impact, we've actually selected about um, four four product categories that are actually having you know or let let, let me say that are returning the highest value for SA ex exports to the to the US based actually on an HS six uh, 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 coding uh, uh, system. Those products actually on the first um, column. Is the, the first column is actually your your commodity. The the under the commodities is wine, citrus and nuts. It's dairy and the the deciduous fruit. And then the second column um shows the additional tariff that is applicable without agoa on the assessed actually products. And that is actually the the the, the implication you know that we see per each category you know in this regard. And it's clear wines will be heavily you know uh, affected, followed by citrus and then you know dairy and 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 then lastly the the deciduous uh, 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 fruit. And then the third column shows the Western Cape primary area um or, or or the large stock unit because there's also dairy products actually in 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 here what is actually the area you know uh, that will be affected you know if you know the 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 we actually get actually out of uh, 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 our while um the fourth column shows the 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 western cape primary production you know uh volumes that are actually linked to 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 products that are actually assessed in here um, for the commodities that are actually on your on your left. So this this is actually, these are the volumes that are actually indicated actually in here. Of course, wine you know uh, with the biggest volume and 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 dairy and 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 deciduous fruit and um, lastly your 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 citrus. But um, on your further right. It's actually the, the the number of jobs that are linked to the products that are actually uh, uh, that are actually assessed in here and that are actually exported actually to the U.S. You know, uh, without actually reading those numbers actually in detail, but the bottom line in here is that about 136 thousand jobs actually on these assessed you know commodities are linked you know to 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 Agoa. So if we actually get out of Agoa, it means that that 136 you know uh, thousand jobs will be affected you know one way or the or the or the or the or the other looking uh further down on the on the risks i think it's also important to note that agoa is not only about exports but it is actually also about uh imports we do actually import uh chicken uh from the from the us that is actually now to supplement actually our 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 supply for 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 for, for chicken and we do also you know uh in, in, import intermediate inputs like your 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 fertilizers uh machinery and actually also some of the inputs that are also used in the agri-processing uh, 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 value chain. And um, I must actually also mention in here that uh, market closure is by far the biggest risk actually in here. Um, as US is actually our premium wine, while at the same time, if markets actually get to close, there will be, you know, oversupply in our alternative markets. And again, you know, prices will be, you know, uh, severely, you know, uh, affected in, 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 in this regard. And another important um, um, issue to note is the fact that Agoa discussions should be contextualized within the current uh, economic environment with nominal prices actually that are actually under pressure, while the cost is actually at, you know, um, all time high given you know the implications actually of the war between uh, 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 Ukraine and, and 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 Russia you know because we know the implications of that and again how the the the, the, the agricultural sector have been you know uh, 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 affected and the western cape again being the major you know uh, exporting prov province um and the major you know agricultural uh, province is is highly affected actually by those 
looking into what the province can actually do, um, one of the things that we actually have to do is actually really to understand the situation. And uh, there's been a lot of research that has been done actually in 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 here um, in the in the past because it's not the first time that Ago Agoa is actually being renewed. So it's going to be very important actually for us to study those documents and also you know continue uh, 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 doing the research because we have actually to understand the implications of this into into the Western Cape Province and also into the Western Cape agriculture in 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 particular in 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 my sake. And um, also you know it's very important that we engage, you know, our potential influencers actually in the U.S. We've got actually the networks in the U.S. The industry has got its networks in the, in the, in the U.S. But also of importance is the fact that the province also have got some twinning arrangements in, 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 in some actually of these provinces. If I can actually now just think actually on, on top of my head, you know, under the Regional Leaders Summit, you, Georgia is also one of those, you know, uh, provinces that actually have got a twinning arrangement with the Western Cape. So so those kind of arrangements are actually very important at this point in time. I also know that our department also has got an, an, an agreement uh, 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 with, with California. And when Minister uh, Amaya went to, to, to California some, some, some time ago, I know Minister Winde wrote a, 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 a letter to, 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 to Governor Newston, you know, um, of California. And there's been actually discussions uh, between Minister Mayor and the Secretary Ross, of, actually of the uh, California Department of Food and Agriculture, you know, in an attempt actually to, 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 to lobby, you know, in, in, in this regard. And of course, we also uh, are engaging, you know, other spheres of government um, in South Africa. Ilse has mentioned what uh, she's planning to do actually with DTI and actually other provinces, but in our our case, I must mention that we are also part of the national structures, um, like the Agricultural Trade Forum, where myself and Dirk are representing the, depart the department and actually also the sector, you know, in that forum. But we are not alone. All key commodity uh, 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 structures are also represented actually at this at this forum. But DTI is also participating actually at this at this forum. So our our main uh, uh, point is to ensure that um, the 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 uh, 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 is actually on the on the agenda and that we are actually having you know um, extensive discussions actually on this matter and also to make sure that DTI keeps on actually reporting actually on this matter. But I must mention that on the previous meeting. That we had, you know, recently. Unfortunately, the DTI could not actually attend to be able to give us, you know, the current status because it's also very important to understand officially what is actually the stance actually of this province. We sorry of this country. We understand that you know um, we are taking this as 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 SACU and actually also as SADC, but it's also very important to note, you know, what actually is the stance actually of the of the of South Africa in 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 this space. But uh, unfortunately, the DTI could not actually attend the previous one. But we'll actually keep on engaging actually with each other to 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 get a little progress on 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 this matter continuing on this um i must mention that before the premier went into the us on monday there was actually an engagement in this uh, uh, uh province with uh, various agricultural uh, stakeholders, and I must mention that the the the, the several stakeholders that were actually uh, met on 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 Monday, they all vow actually to support Premier Winde, you know, with his engagements, um, with actually some actually of their networks in the in the in the in the US, because that's actually very you know uh, 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 important actually for lobbying and you know playing actually that advocacy, you know, um, when the Premier is actually in the in the US, you know, uh, at the moment, and the key points that uh, we also pick up actually from those engagements for, from our stakeholders was that there, there is a need actually to um, uh, for the focus that it should not be on what we as the Western Cape and South Africa can benefit actually from uh, the U.S., but also what actually the U.S. actually stand to lose, you know, in the absence of, or, 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 of, of ACOA. And it was also mentioned that uh, we should actually use the opportunities provided by the African um, Continental Free Trade Agreement 
uh, agreement to argue um, why the Western Cape is ready as South Africa, I'm uh, sorry, why, why is the Western Cape is ready? And again, as South Africa in this regard is seen as the gateway to the rest actually of the continent. So, you know, um, the, 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 the US might actually, you know, benefit through South Africa using the opportunities all provided by the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. And again, it was mentioned that we should actually use evidence of the regional community of the new chains, you know, to argue to AGOA or, 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 or any other framework for that matter that would be um, of mutual beneficial to, 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 to both parties and that we should actually also explore the possibility of a new agreement with the USA um, on an equal footing as partners, but um, also looking at areas like your youth development, climate change and, and, and research and, and development. In this regard, so these were actually all the the, the 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 points that came actually from our stakeholder engagement that took place on Monday before the premier actually went to to to, to the US. I've mentioned that um, AGOA is not only about uh, uh, exports, it is actually also about imports and, and without actually really looking further actually onto this slide, but uh, this is actually, these are the categories of what were actually, uh, 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 let me say our biggest agricultural actually imports from the from the US, meat, which I think, you know, uh, 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 chicken falls actually under this, and um, also the edible meat of fowl is also one of those products who are actually, you know, importing edible fruits and that we are actually in as much as we're exporting, we're also, you know, um, importing from them, noting that agriculture is actually seasonal and the miscellaneous edible preparations that were also importing from them and uh, beverage spirits actually and vinegar, which were actually also importing actually from, from, the, from the US and that's actually trade, you know, in as much as you can export, but there are some imports that you will actually require as a, as a, as a country. Some concluding remarks actually from my side uh, is to say uh, Western Cape is more at risk than the rest actually of South Africa. Um, on average. And again, the Western Cape economic um, losses due to higher tariffs is as twice you know, the magnitude um, as compared to, 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 to South Africa. Um, and also tariff advantage with AGOA is relatively small, but the scaling of additional cost you know, um, is significant. That graph, sorry, those calculations that I've showed for the 25 uh, uh, products, that is now 26 million vis-a-vis to, to 267 million, you know, cost actually without uh, 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 the tariff for the top agricultural exports to the to the US that are actually from the Western Cape. And again, the businesses, you know, um, that will actually be, you know, uh, losing, you know, in this regard and also the job impact on the Western Cape industry especially on farm and also on processing, especially in wine, citrus, deciduous and, and, and dairy. That is those products that are actually linked to, to, to AGOA that I've shown on the other slide. And um, again, I've, I'm, I'm reiterating the fact that AGOA is not only about exports, but also about imports actually from the US uh, uh, as well. And, and noting that market closure by far is the biggest risk that we're talking about in here, given that the US is actually our premium market and that, you know, with the closure actually of the market, there will be oversupply in our uh, alternative markets and that will actually impose, you know, uh, uh, pressure actually on, 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 on prices, which of course they're going to be, you know, uh, affecting, you know, uh, 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 production or and, 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 and gross actually income actually at farm level. And um, again, you know, emphasizing the fact that uh, AGOA discussions, they should actually be contextualized within the current economic environment, within nominal prices, uh, you know, um, is that actually under pressure while the cost is actually at all time high? You know, uh, we've seen actually inflation, you know, uh, that we're actually facing as a, as, a, as a country. And all these things actually have to be taken into consideration that AGOA is not happening in isolation, is happening, you know, in the presence actually of all those uh, uh, challenges. I, I think, Chair, that is actually my last slide, but I must actually give compliments also to, to, to BFEP because we're actually working together, you know, on the research that we're actually doing, you know, under this topic actually of AGOA. Thank you very much, Chairperson. That is all from my side. Thank you very much, Ms. Matoti. I would just like to say before we move on to questions, it's so clear how much passion you have for this issue and how seriously you and your department are taking this issue, but also to the Department of Economic Opportunities and Tourism and to Westgro for playing such an important role in this issue. And yes, while it is a national issue, 
as a province, we have a concurrent responsibility um, in terms of trade under the constitution. And as you've highlighted, this particular um, act of the US government has massive repercussions on our economy, particularly our economy, because agriculture is such a large export. And with that, it would have a massive impact on the number of jobs generated from our province. So sincerely, thank you for your passion, for your determination, um, and for the work that you're doing on this. It doesn't go unnoticed, and it will play a, a massive role in making sure that we're included going forward. Um, and also that, if possible, we can lobby for provisions that need to be expanded so that we can better our economy and continue to grow. So with that, members, I would like to open up for any questions that you might have. I recognize member van der Westhuizen. Um, Ms. Matoti, if I could just ask if you could kindly um, take down the screen. Okay, sorry, I'm still sharing. Thank you. Is it okay. now off? Yeah, perfect, okay. thank you. Thank you. Too. All right, thank you. Uh, Member van der Westhuizen. Thank you, Chair, and thank you uh, through you to Ms. Matoti. I found the graph depicting the changes over time uh, 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 very interesting and the fact that there's been recent sharp growth in the trade with the USA so my question is is this the 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 general uh, situation that we find that it takes a lot of time for people to adjust to uh, say for example opportunities but once those opportunities arise, that it's almost like a snowballing effect mm -hmm. that you that you then get, uh, which means that you know uh, if we could predict uh, what our exports could do, uh, should a go be renewed, uh, that that uh, sharp growth is perhaps something which one could see going forward, yeah. being extended and and being built on. Is that the is that the general finding that in terms of international trade uh, that it takes a number of years to establish a market and to establish those relationships with your uh, role players such as your importers, uh, your agents, uh, as well obviously then as those that that produce the goods. Thank you. Chair, I can't agree, you, you know, uh, with you more on, 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 on or, or let me say I agree with you more than anything, actually, on the statement that you've actually made. Um, and, and indeed, uh, when you are actually, you know, uh, 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 trading with these countries, actually, at the beginning, there is quite actually a lot of issues actually at play, you know, but as you build trust, you know, uh, with your importers or your markets, then they actually tend to 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 import more uh, uh, from you. But also from a primary uh, point of view, I I know for a fact that some actually of the products it actually takes a while for 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 exporters to to comply with the protocol. And as time go along, they actually get you know to master and be able to comply actually with some of the protocol you know requirements. I'm now referring you know in particular. To to primary products and once actually all those actually are sorted out then you can see that exponential growth and that's actually what we see you know um on issues actually of uh citrus of citrus and actually you know fruit in 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 particular um and of course you know wine i i do believe you know uh south african wines are really one actually of the most trusted actually from the new world actually of wines actually in the in the in the us in terms actually of quality so over the years we've been actually building trust you know uh with our with our markets and hence we see this exponential growth and indeed you know if we were actually to have you know uh, uh this uh, you know uh, agoa uh, extended we'll actually see that graph actually giving i mean going higher and higher you know uh, at chairperson thank you so much thank you so much so we'll open up for a few more questions now i see a hand from member Brunkes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Chair, yes, and good morning again to everybody, all the colleagues. Uh, Chair, um, I've listened to the presentation. Very, very interesting. Uh, and um, 
Yes, my question is very simply, uh, how can uh, a lay person in Mitchell Spring, you know, uh, get to be part of this uh, type of lucrative uh, uh, imports and exports uh, processes? Can, can I just get some indication, you know, uh, some understanding how can the, the, the normal person here on the ground, because this all uh, sounds very, uh, very lucrative, I must say. Uh, when you when you hear about billions and billions and, but our people here on the ground, they they, they don't get to hear about this. Uh, you know, I I see myself very fortunate being part of this uh, uh, meeting today, and thank you for the opportunity. But uh, I'm very soon in the next hour, or two, I'm going to go to my community where I'm going to give a sermon in one of the uh, areas here in Mrs. Plain. Um, what can I tell them? Uh, how can they be, uh, become part of these uh, type of uh, processes? Maybe it's a very general question, but if I can just get the indication. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, members, are there any further questions? I see none. From my side, I would also like to put um, one or two questions forward. Uh, my first question was, I was interested to hear about Seychelles graduating out of AGOA, um, and if I could just request a bit more information on that. So what would be kind of the criteria for graduating out of AGOA? What if they managed to achieve? How did they go about it? Um, if we could get a bit more information. And then um, just wanted to clarify, so on this slide on Western Cape agribusiness and job impact, can I confirm the last column, um, which relates to jobs, is that jobs that are directly linked to exports? Um, if I could just clarify, and then I'll hold over my other questions for the next round. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Chair, for the for, for for the questions and also from the from the members. Um, on the general question on how a lay person in Mitchell's plain gain from uh, 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 Goa, um, I, I, I made a statement to say our, our um, sorry, uh, Agoa is important actually for the imports in as much as it is actually, you know, important actually for the exports. We are actually um, importing um, um, meat to supplement um, our demand in, 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 in the country. So in a sense, you know, um, without actually those imports actually from the US, we might actually get, you know, to have actually higher prices actually of uh, chicken in particular, which is actually the meat that is actually, you know, um, being actually eaten, you know, a lot by our LSM, you know, uh, 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 category. So, you know, uh, prices will actually really be higher in this regard, which means that, you know, your layman person actually on the ground will actually be, you know, uh, 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 affected actually in 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 that regard, in, in that regard, and that talks to, you know, to 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 affordability which actually is one category or one part of our, our, our food security. And also in the production process, we use machinery to produce some actually of our goods, you know, from the US and we use um, some actually of the inputs in the production pro process like your fertilizers and also some are actually, you know, affecting, you know, uh, uh, sorry, are used actually in agri-processing and those are the producers that are actually eaten actually by our consumers across the board, you know, uh, starting actually from our lower, you know, uh, 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 category. So that's actually where, you know, uh, uh, um, our, our uh, you know, uh, lower level people are actually also, you know, gaining from 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 from, 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 from production, and 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 generally, you know, um, I, I I would assume that some actually of the people, you know, um, in Mitchell's play are employed in some actually of the 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 the, the sectors and subsectors that are actually, you know, are, are benefiting actually from this agora. So, you know, from a jobs, you know, point of view, you know, they will generally be a uh, 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 are gaining, you know, in 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 this regard. I might not actually have fully, you know, answered, but I'm just, you know, just touching base actually on some actually of the, you know, um, easy things actually to 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 observe and 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 and, and see. Um, in terms actually of providing actually the 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 or how socials actually graduated actually from Agoa, we will actually definitely try and look for the information and actually uh, supply uh, uh, the members in 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 this regard with that information. 
And then on the slide uh, for jobs, um, the, 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 what you see actually on the right, it's all the jobs that are actually involved in those uh, 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 commodities, but very much actually for exports. You know, so that 136,000, it's it's the number of actually it's the total number actually of jobs that are that will actually be you know uh, or that are likely to be actually affected once we actually do not actually improve so we do not actually approve you know or we do not actually uh, get extension on 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 Agoa. So those are actually the, the 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 jobs that will be likely you know affected um for for those commodities. Thanks, Chef. Thank you very much. Apologies did I, if I missed it. Um, did you comment on the uh, column under the presentation? Yes, I did. I did comment actually on that on that column. There was I, I explained what each, what each and uh, and every column okay. stands for. There there were actually five columns, and the last one was really the job and the total jobs affected. Or let me say that will be you know um are, are linked to 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 Agoa is actually about hundred and thirty six thousand on on that column. Okay, and those are exports specifically or AGOA in total? They are all linked to 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 AGOA. Okay. It's not to say that if we actually don't do not do we do not actually get extension that all those hundred and thirty six will lose jobs, but they will be one way or the other affected. You know, okay. because remember there were actually issues of competitiveness that actually my other colleagues actually spoke about. So those are actually gonna trick it down actually to farm level. So uh, one way or the other, people might some people might lose jobs, or definitely some people might actually you know uh, get cuts. But there is actually something that will actually happen to all those individuals actually in those categories. Thanks, Chair. Okay, okay thank you. So it's jobs directly and indirectly affected yes. as a result. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the clarity, members. Are there any further questions that you have? Members are very quiet today. Um, Member van der Westeisen. Yes, thank you very much. I think what is important, and this is not a question, it's more of a statement, is that international trade drives prices down. And I think particularly when it comes to agricultural products, you know, you, you only, uh, you have different qualities of agricultural primary products. And you, uh, if you're a farmer and if you can earn a lot of money from uh, exports, and that is what many farmers aim for, you you produce more export quality fruit, but you also have excellent quality fruit, which you then, uh, as a byproduct, because agricultural products come in a range, you can't tell the tree only to produce uh, fruit of a certain size, for example. Mm -hmm. So now you get quite often uh, the nicest and the biggest apples or the nicest and the biggest oranges, but because they're not suitable to fit into a carton or they don't meet the requirements of the of the importers on the other side. So then your local uh, consumers are benefiting from uh, lower prices uh, because now there's a bigger supply and we know that supply and demand, you know, are the factors that that influence prices. So also to link on to Honorable Brunkeis's question, yes. the prices of food, and, and Ms. Matotti referred, for example, to chicken, which is a very important one, but also very, uh, you know, they, 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 there's a lot of pressure then also from our South African uh, poultry association and, and those role players, uh, because they, they don't want the competition. Uh, particularly when the competition can be linked to what is called dumping. Uh, so I think what we should say to one another, there are jobs that are that will be affected if a goer is no longer there, but there are also food prices, as Ms. Matotti referred to, uh, some of those, those produce, food prices that, will, uh, that one can expect to increase the moment, uh, you know, the international markets are no longer there as an incentive for people to start producing. We may not immediately see that effect. My impression is that the immediate effect might even be that food prices might drop slightly because the market is a bit smaller. But on the long term, I think uh, we, we should take into account the fact of the risk that food prices might even increase uh, when export markets are close to us. 
and and uh, we do know that we're already struggling with the high food inflation. I th think the latest figure I saw was a 14% year-on-year increase in, in, in food costs. So so th this is a very important aspect, and as Ms. Matoti also referred to, it will affect your lower LSM uh, uh, consumers far more than those that 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 uh, for whom the bread basket is a very small part of the monthly expense. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, member. Thank you, thanks a lot. Thank you. I would also just like to add two questions um, to this round. So my first question is um, from the Department of Agriculture side, are there any provisions under AGOA that you would like to be expanded? Um, I've asked the same question to the previous department, but I know that you guys um, work more specifically um, in the agricultural sector, or if not expanded, maybe amended. And then I believe that also ties in with Member Fund of East Hazen, um, on the issue of dumping. Then um, in terms of, and it's possibly a political question, and if you don't feel comfortable, you can um, maybe refer to your principles, but in your um, experience or expertise, what do you feel are the challenges um, in terms of our inclusion at this point? Thank you. Can, can we reflect on the second one again, Mama? Uh, so sure. my question is... Uh, yes, the second what, one. Yes. So what specifically do you feel are our challenges in terms of um, inclusion? Thank you. Okay. Um, th thank you so much. Um, on the on the issue of actually of any any provisions that we would love uh, to see being you know um, expanded or actually being looked into. Um, of course, the, the 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 issue of chicken is 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 always you know the 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 the, the biggest one. Uh, from from the agricultural uh, 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 point of view, but it's it's a very difficult one uh, 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 to look at actually in in, in uh, uh, as well, you know, uh, because when one actually talks of dumping, you know, um, if there hasn't been any any uh, um, evidence that us is actually dumping actually into south africa so definitely you know um it, it will not actually be taken actually as a very as a very serious matter because south africa must actually prove beyond reasonable doubt that you know a chicken coming actually from the us is actually you know a uh, a uh, 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 dumping you know to 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 south africa and at this point in time you know for all these years unfortunately we struggled actually to 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 to, to prove that and um on on the second one actually on on um what what do i think might be the reasons not honestly speaking i i i think che um this is this is really highly political actually at this point in time and i think it's a matter that is actually you know um on 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 the media and um i i i remain you know um hopeful you know with all the lobbying and actually everything that is actually currently being down being done um that south africa must try you know its best to 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 remain in 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 a goal and that you know um in the province as we do not actually have got a competency to negotiate let's do what we can do you know uh to our level best actually to 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 play the 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 the, the lobbying and actually the advocacy role that we actually are playing because if it is not actually approved as other you know our colleagues actually indicated it's not to say we're not going to trade but the most important thing is that it will actually really be very costly you know for us to to to, to, to trade and there will be actually severe you know, um, uh, 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 implications. I, I just hope that the political um, climate could um, could could change actually for the better in this regard, so that we don't actually find ourselves actually in trouble. I, I, I but I can't go further than that. Thanks, Trey. Thank you very much, Ms. Matoti. I know I tried my luck a bit there, um, but you answered very diplomatically. Um, Members, are there any further questions? All right, I don't see any further. Okay, um, I did see a hand from. Uh, maybe, maybe Tepo wants to add something. Tepo. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the presentations. 
Uh, regarding the other question that you asked Ms. Matoti concerning the graduation of Seychelles from Agua, it, it was due to uh, Seychelles uh, GDP per capita increasing above the 12, 12. 12 and some mm -hmm. odd uh, uh, criteria set. So even as in South Africa, as soon as our GDP per capita goes up, we should expect that we'll be graduating. From it. Yes, thank you very much. I, I, I think on that note, you know, uh, Seychelles is really above, you know, 12 US dollars per capita. That's a very good indicator. And if I'm not mistaken, South Africa is still around about four, four US dollars, you know, at the, at the, at the, at the moment. But I presume that will not be the only indicator. So other, other indicators might actually just take us actually out of this accord sooner than we think. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Members, I'm going to check again if there are any further questions. All right, I see none. With that, I would like to sincerely thank all the departments and WESCRO um, and the present, uh, presenters for your contributions today. I think all of us realize how important this issue is, um, not just for our country, but also for our province, our economy, and for jobs. We've been hard hit by um, COVID, we've been hard hit by rising inflation, and we really, really have to take every single opportunity that we can to claw back jobs and to ensure that we're not only recovering, but that we are growing our economy and that we maintain our, our competitive edge overall. So with that, I would like to, again, thank each and every single presenter and the departments. Um, I'll excuse you now, and we'll now move on to resolutions as a committee. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Chair. Bye. Thanks very much. It's been good. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Thanks, Chair. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye. All right, members. Um, so I think we are ready now to take our resolutions. Can I get a hand um, to indicate if there are any? I recognize firstly Member van der Beesthuizen and then Member Seleko. Yes, thank you, Chair. My first proposal would be that we uh, thank the Department of Westcrow as well as the Department of Agriculture for their presentations, which clearly showed that uh, the GOA is is of extreme importance to the Western Cape, to job creation, but also the whole issue of uh, prices, uh, food prices, uh, which are positively affected by international trade. That, that would be my first proposal. The second one is, uh, I think we should uh realized i think the figure that was shown in terms of just agricultural jobs that would be affected by the possible termination of a goa is something like 236000 we can perhaps just go back to that presentation for the exact figure but uh those are the jobs that will be affected should a goa be scrapped and i think that is a, a, a serious concern which we from this committee and from the Western Cape should should be raising, and therefore that we should uh, first uh, welcome the effects. That might be a third resolution. Welcome the hard work from Westgro, the Western Cape Agricultural Department, and 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 particularly our uh, producers of goods, our exporters of goods. Uh, for their efforts in growing the market and that we must uh, give recognition to the fact that clearly it shows it, it takes a number of, of 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 years to build up those export relationships to uh, uh, establish uh, trust in your product and the quality of your product and the reliability of your supply uh, in order to develop an international market or an export market. And <clears throat> that I almost want to say now that Goa is really sh showing the biggest fruit. Now it's coming to an 
potential end and that therefore you know while it has been very important in the past to us the future benefits of a goer uh, might far exceed what we've seen up to now which just again reiterates why it is so important to us uh, as a country and as a probably as a continent to be able to to get an extension of the current agreement those would be my proposals chair thank you Thank you very much. I see Member Seleko. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, let me first uh, acknowledge and also welcome uh, my my neighbour and senior back to to the African soil, uh, Honourable Andrikas Pandavesaizen. It's good to hear your voice, uh, Chair. My first one would that uh, we note uh, that DERCO and DTIC didn't come despite being invited and trade being an area on concurrence in the constitution. That's my first resolution. And my second one is that we re-invite DTIC to brief us as a committee on the lobbying efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And you touched on a very important point. Um, I think as, as well, I would like to reiterate and commend the departments on their presentation and their efforts. I also want to um, commend the Minister and the Premier um, on their trade mission now to the US. And the reason for that is I feel that that mission goes a long way in showing the friendship that the Western Cape in particular has with the US and maintaining those strong bilateral ties. But our departmental officials today had quite a difficult job in presenting to us on an issue that is highly political and they are trying to do their jobs, but they are not the politicians. And what hasn't been said, but has been implied is that of course the relationship with the USA is strained. And that is due to a number of political factors um, that we have seen such as the Lady R incident, um, such as the uh, exercises, uh, military exercises in Durban and an unclear policy position by the national government when it comes to the Russia and Ukrainian war. And I note your resolution and support your resolution as well that we invite DTIC and I'm also concerned that Durko didn't arrive today and I would also like to add some context to that um, because I think it is important in terms of the political climate that we find ourselves in and as you mentioned, our area of, of, comp of concurrency under the constitution, this particular legislative um, body. So we had invited Durko initially. The minister submitted her apologies and she indicated that her department would attend. She later responded to say that the department would no longer attend, but that instead DTIC would attend. We'd followed up with DTIC a number of times and through unofficial channels, they said that they would attend or that they usually do. And then they responded to say that they would not attend. And it was the minister's indication that with issues of such a national importance, it should rather go to the NCOP rather than to, than to our legislature. But I think as has been put so clearly by the Department of Agriculture in particular, this area or this act will have a profound impact, not just on South Africa, but especially on the Western Cape, where agriculture is our largest export. And if we look at legislation on this matter, like you've said, this is an area that we are allowed to get more feedback on. It is a competence of our standing committee and so we do have the right as a standing committee to have the department come and brief us, particularly DTIC, who is the championing body or the championing department in this regard. We should be able to ask them for information as it relates to AGOA and their lobbying efforts. So I don't think it's acceptable that we can't get that information from them and that this is deferred to a different legislature, a different level of government. So I definitely support re-inviting them 
And I would just like to add to that, um, I note that they have said that this area could go to the NCOP or this question and briefing could go to the NCOP. So if that is the case, then what we can also do in my proposal here, members, um, is that I can write to the um, Depart uh, DTIC and to the NCOP to request the standing committee takes place, but that our members are included as well and that they are included with the same rights as any other member at the NCOP level to ask questions that relate to a goer so that we can fulfill our legislative competence because we're not able to do that. I received a subsequent email as well um, from NCOP and NA delegates, particularly the NA, saying that this is something that they will add um, to, to their plan, their business plan, and they will discuss a go at the NA level. But again, that does not allow us as members of this standing committee or other affected standing committees like agriculture to interrogate this question, to get information on what lobbying efforts are actually being taken at a national level. And so I don't think that the current proposal is sufficient. So members with your support, I will write to DTIC and the NCOP to request that we can be included. And if not, then we'll, they should come back to our committee. Members, I'm not sure if you have feedback on that, but I see a hand from member um, Seleko and then member van der Westhuizen. Chair, I, I will take your guidance and and uh, and go ahead, you know, wholeheartedly agree with you. We have a responsibility as a committee and, you know, and people, you know, we've got other departments that come and account to us and I don't see anything different, you know, or from from this particular department as this is a uh, is about lives and livelihoods and you know and i i really don't totally don't understand why they wouldn't want to come and account so i'm hold heartedly you know in agreement with your stance and your and your guidance in this particular matter and how we should take it forward thank you very much chair thank you very much i see member van der Vistesen. yes thank you chair the chair i fully agree uh, and perhaps i can just point out that when in terms of the spirit of cooperative governance every time when national has asked us whether they could come and brief us we have uh, always agreed to that uh, so for example national treasury annually comes and briefs us on for example the economic outlook etc and we've always not only accommodated them but we've welcomed that kind of cooperative uh, spirit and, and working together. And uh, and I think therefore, uh, all we're doing is to call on our national departments, uh, other national departments to continue in that spirit of, of working together with us. We don't have oversight over them, but I think they've got important information to share with us, which would allow us uh, uh, or strengthen our position to play our role uh, better. But then secondly, Chair, if I may move on to an, uh, another resolution, if it's fine with you. Chair, there's the, um, uh, I, I asked a question regarding the price elasticity and particularly the, the, the t what tariffs would apply should a goer be scrapped? And thirdly, what is the typical uh, export costs to the USA, and perhaps one can we can ask them for let's say the five biggest uh, products, if they could just give us a breakdown of the typical uh, 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 tariffs that uh, the USA would be asking, let's say for example other countries uh, outside of AGOA, uh, and perhaps one can say that, uh, five products. Uh, taken from different categories. I, I, I would presume that, you know, all agricultural products would have the same import tariff, but that we could just get an indication of, say, manufactured goods, uh, uh, agricultural goods, etc. If they could just give us an indication as they uh, actually undertook to do uh, uh, in writing, that's my proposal. Thank you. I'd support that. And if I could just add to that, um, I would like 
for them to send us the survey um, of businesses that Westco conducted in terms of a go. And I'd be interested to see the employment numbers as well um, that they identified. And this, are there any further resolutions? I see none. With that, I would like to thank you very much um, for today's meeting. Um, it's been very interesting, a lot of um, helpful information. Very good to see the work that has been done. And um, again, welcome back, uh, Member Fund of Vestazen. I'm sure it must be good to be home, although it's quite cold and wet on this side. And I wish you all a very, very good weekend. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Keep uh, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, you very person. much. Yeah, you have, have a lovely weekend, Chair, also. Yeah, I know oh, other members. members. Thank you. Remember Brangais. It's nice. Yeah, remember. Sleko. <laughs> I miss yeah, you, man. Yeah, I'll see you, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're all good. Ah, great stuff. Great stuff, member, man. Yeah, yeah, guys, have a lovely weekend. You too, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.